Well, hello there, each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayer's television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur. I own Word Therapy Publishing and Alphabet Theater Workshop. But many of you know me as Wise Courtship because of my book with a three-step system. It will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for joining me. Make sure you greet me. You're watching me via Facebook Live. You're watching me through, uh, via Periscope. And then uh, many of you are going to catch me on the podcast um, that we have the Wise Courtship Devotional uh, Podcast. You're gonna catch this on that. And um, what else? You're gonna also see me on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see each and every one of you on today. As a matter of fact, speaking of YouTube, we have a, a moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer releasing right now. Every Sunday, there's a new one that is released. And then this one, of course, will go up as well. Uh, let me make sure I can uh, greet everyone if you come in. Hey, Frazier, good to see you. Frazier, we have to talk. We have to talk. Good to see you on today. Guys, make sure that you are sharing this broadcast by touching right down there. If you are on Periscope, you're going to share with all of your followers. You're going to put it on Facebook and you're going to tweet it out. So go ahead and do that. And um, if you're watching via Facebook, you're going to share by pushing down there as well. Um, but you're going to share it onto your timeline. You can also invite people into the broadcast and you can start a watch party. So make sure you do that, dear ones. And if you're watching me via YouTube, make sure you like, comment and subscribe to this video. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you'll know every time I upload a new video. And if you're listening to me via podcast, go ahead and follow me, okay? I'm on uh, TalkShoe and Anchor and Spotify and all over the place, okay? So welcome each and every one of you in whatever way you are joining me, okay? I am so excited to have you on. And so now we're going to get ready to get started and today we're going to be talking about to be thankful, thankful in a crisis. We've been talking about a crisis lately. We've got a lot of things going on. Um, and um, I definitely um, want to continue in that vein, at least for now, at least for now. Um, you know, however the Lord say, okay, that's how long we're going to we gonna go with that. So greetings, greetings. Hello, hello uh, to Frazier who's watching us on Facebook. Uh, let's see, Marietta just came in. Good to see you, darling, watching us on Facebook. You know, Facebook is taking over, y'all. Come on, Periscope, don't be slow. Don't be slow on today. So listen, we're going to um, be reading. We're talking about thankful in a crisis. And I'm gonna read uh, quite a bit of scripture here uh, before I focus on um, our little key verse that we're going to focus on on today. So go ahead and get your Bibles, your iPads, your apparatuses is so that you can get to, um, you know, I'm different, y'all. <laughs> I'm different. You know what? I, I've been doing this way before the pandemic. Y'all know that. I've been coming on, giving encouragement and different things like that. And um, I just talk to people straight away. So, you know, my ministry is just a little different. Okay. <laughs> just a little different. We have a whole lot of fun here, too, as we are being encouraged and going forth in the word. Good to see you, um, um, Pastor Payne is here in the house. Good to see you on today, visiting us from Facebook. Guys, go ahead and share this, okay? Share this, start a watch party and all of that good stuff. And we're going to go ahead and get into this word. So I'm reading 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 21. Uh-huh, okay, so 1 Thessalonians, let's get there. 
chapter five. Okay. And then we're going to start with verse, starting with verse 12. Okay. And we're going to read 12 through 21. And I am reading the New International Version. Okay. Now that's the version I'm reading. All right. But if you got a different version, it's okay. All right. Let's go. Now, we ask you, brethren, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I just read 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 21, and we're going to focus on 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Okay, you ready? Let's say, let's read it together. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Wow. Give thanks in all circumstances. That's amazing. (laughs) Why would I say that's amazing? Good to see you, Judy. Good to see you on today. She's visiting us via Facebook. And guys, I'm depending on you to go ahead and share this broadcast so that people will be blessed by what we are about to say on today. Now, you know that when I come on, I just come on and, and, and do whatever the Lord gives me in a few moments before I press the button, okay? (laughs) Whatever he gives me. So we had talked a lot about uh, peace in a crisis. We talked about um, Christ in a crisis, faith in a crisis. Uh, We had a little regular series without even really trying to do that. And today I wanna talk about thankful in a crisis. Thankful in a crisis. And as I alluded to in my description of this broadcast, we are in some turbulent times. Is that not right? We are in some turbulent times. Good to see you, Miss Adela. Good to see you on today. We are in some turbulent times. There's a lot of things that are going on in this earth on today. A lot of things are happening uh, one with the other. You know, there's wars and rumors of wars, there's famine, there's calamity, there's confusion, there is pandemics. And we're in the middle of one. If you're listening to me via podcast and you listen to this later in the future and uh, you want to know the setting in which I'm discussing this, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Thank you so much, Judy, for sharing the broadcast. And we are um, in a confusing time. We have been locked down. We have been sheltered in place. And now they're talking about releasing us, releasing us into society, even though all of us have not been tested. And there's so much that has been going on. Yes, indeed. Uh, Pastor Payne says amazing and sometimes hard, but we must be obedient. And even though, even though, good to see you, Brittany, even though We are going through some turbulent times, some confusing times, some times where it may be hard for those. Many people have lost loved ones. I know I have uh, to COVID-19. Many people have been sick. Okay. Many people have uh, lost their jobs, their income, or their income is very low. Their businesses have been unstable. Many things have been going on with that. Even in this kind of kind of time, even in this kind of time, we still, dear ones, can be thankful. If you believe that, put the word thankful in the chat box. If you believe that, put the word thankful in the chat box. I believe, and we're talking about thankful in a crisis, 
I believe that even though things are chaotic and that we are going through so much right now, we still can be thankful. Now, if you go back and look at the key verse, let's go back and look at the key verse that we're focusing on. First Thessalonians 5, 18. It says, make sure, I'm sorry, let me, um, verse 18. Sorry about that. It says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Just by reading 1 Thessalonians 5, 18a, the first part of that verse, what we're noticing is already that when it says give thanks in all circumstances, that Miss Adela, that even though we are Christians, even though um, we try to do what is right, we still are going to have various circumstances happen in our lives. I see some thankful people up here on this chat box. I see some thankful people. Even though we have some various situations that will come upon us, because the scripture alludes to us that we will have different circumstances. What type of circumstances will we have in our lives? Some circumstances will be happy. Some circumstances will be sad. Some circumstances we will be celebrating. Uh, um, Marietta, some circumstances we will be grieving. Judy, is that not right? There are some circumstances where we will be planning. Um, when you look in the book of Ecclesiastes, it talks about that. It talks about there is a time, there's a season for everything. But no matter what the circumstance is, no matter what the season is, beloved, we ought to give thanks. And as I said in my description, that even though we have chaotic times happening, even though we have certain circumstances going on in our lives, that we can look at the situation from the perspective of there's so much going wrong. You can look from, look from that perspective. But I challenge everyone. And if you're doing this, say, say, I'm giving thanks. Put that in the chat box. I'm challenging everyone to look at the circumstance in a positive light. I know it's hard, but what makes what makes it helpful is that when you begin to be a thankful person, when you begin to give thanks, you you find out that you have peace. You find out that you have joy. You find out that you are even content, even in a chaotic situation. So, for instance, you could be complaining that I'm only in this small, uh, small space and I'm sheltered in place in a small place. But if you begin to thank God, the fact that you even have shelter. Oh, my gosh. I wish somebody would help me here. I have some people who are agreeing with me for those who are listening to the podcast. There are people in this chat box who are saying I'm giving thanks. Because you could focus on the fact that where you're sheltering in place is small. Where you're sheltering in place does not have all of the amenities you would like for it to have. But when you are when you start looking at the fact that you're not actually in prison, that maybe you are sheltered in place with loved ones or maybe you are alone, but you are in a situation that is comfortable that you have the things that you need. When you begin to focus on what is going right in your life and you begin to thank God in all circumstances, you begin to thank God and say, you know what? I am grateful for what you have already given me in my life. Is there anybody thankful here? And even in the crisis, listen, 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 I, I try not to teach anything that I'm not doing. Now, you know, there's some things you do have to teach that it's just right no matter what. <laughs> it's right no matter what. But when I try to give advice, I try to give advice based off things that I'm doing myself. Listen, there's times in my life that has been very, very dark. And I still had to focus and say, God, I thank you. Anybody ever been sick? And sometimes all you can do is say, God, I thank you that you woke me up to see another day. Oh, my gosh. Miss Adela says, yes, give thanks for everything. Pastor Payne says hard times help you put things in perspective and that God is in control. God has always been in control. Is that not right? God is in control. And once we know that he is, he's, he's, he's moving the ship, he's flying the plane, he's got all the earth in the palm of his hand. Once we know he's in control, and look at this, guys, not only is he in control, he's not funny acting. 
He's not wishy-washy. He's not a madman pushing buttons. He's not a person that one day I say this and the next day I say that. Because God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And you can rest assured in God. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling something right there. I'm right there with you, uh, Etta. Hallelujah. When you know that about God, when you know that about his character, when you know that he remains the same no matter what, you can rest in confidence that he has everything. Somebody put everything in the chat box everything under control. Now I'm going to stop right here for just a moment. And I'm going to remind you whether you're watching me on Facebook, Periscope, whether you're listening to the podcast, whether you're even on YouTube, you can share this broadcast. Go ahead and share this broadcast. If you're live, if you're watching it on the replay, like, comment, subscribe, share it out, invite people into the broadcast. Because I believe somebody's going to be blessed by this. Because as long as you're sitting in your house and you can list all of the things that you think that is going wrong in your life, as long as you do that, you're going to have a bleak outcome in your life. Why is it, beloved, that some people have less than we do? Woo! And they're celebrating God and they're so happy and they're so fulfilled and they're not complaining. Why is it that some people don't even have limbs, their arms and legs? Oh, my goodness. They don't have any of that stuff. And yet they are happy. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for that cross reference, Judy. Jeremiah 29, 11. And uh, Pastor Payne said closer to God during this time. That's what it's all about. He wants you to draw closer. He wants you to be thankful. Anybody have children on this broadcast? Anybody have children? Oh my gosh. When you have more than one child and especially, and you got one that is grateful, will always be grateful for whatever you give, thankful. And then you got another one that's complaining, but um, this is okay, but we need this. And I wish I had that. You still love them. But you tend to do more for the one who's grateful. <laughs> you tend to do a little extra, a little extra for the one who's grateful, honey. And you live such a quality life when you can give thanks in everything. Is it anybody here who's thankful, even though we're sheltered in place? I'll be praying for you, sweet Reese. You have some personal storms going on. And even in personal storms, let me just tell you, let me just, let me just tell you something. And, and I know sweet Reese knows this already. I know she knows this already. Even in some of the worst storms in your life, you can always find something to be grateful for. Some of us go through storms and we got family around. That's a blessing because you could go through the storm all by yourself. And sometimes you go through the storm all by yourself, but God comes and he, he sits there with you. He gives you extra strength. He gives you the ability to endure, to persevere. That's a blessing. Oh my gosh. Even sometimes too, when people are turning their whole backs, their backs against you, you can raise your hand and say, well, God, I thank you. You showed me who's with me and who's against me. <laughs> Lord, you can always find something to be thankful for. Oh, my gosh. And so as we go into the next phase of this, as we go into our prayer, and I really need to pull up the prayer on today, we may have some prayer requests. And I definitely am going to acknowledge your prayer requests. And I want you to put your prayer requests up because um, I want you know other people on this broadcast to pray for you. And I will go back through the broadcast and I will pray for you after I finish. Um, but we're going to do a Thanksgiving prayer on today. And that is, I, I try to pray one, at least once a day, a Thanksgiving prayer. And with that Thanksgiving prayer, um, what I try to do is try to focus um, on everything the Lord has done for me and also on God's character. I try to focus on that and give him thanks. And give him thanks. And what I'm doing right now is just checking to see if we had some prayer requests ahead of time, which we do not. But um, at the time that I put my glasses um, back on, you can put your prayer requests up so that I, I can see that they're all in at a certain time together. And um, I will pray for you uh, when I get off of that broadcast for your particular, your, that particular um, prayer concern. 
Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, uh, Pastor Payne. I love that comment. So we're going to go before the Lord in prayer, and I'm going to pray a thanksgiving prayer. I'm going to thank him for various things, but I need your help. I need for you to put up through the chat box what you are thankful for as well. And no matter what platform you're watching me from, there's some sort of mechanism there where you can comment. Would you put a comment and let me know what you are thanking God for? Let um, Just put it up through the chat box. If it's personal, I get that. If it's personal, I get that. But if you can, let us know what you are thanking God for. Let's go ahead and pray, shall we? Thank you for that, uh, Miss uh, Lorraine. Good to see you on today. Good to see you on today. Good to see you. So let's go before the Lord in prayer, shall we? And, and I'm going to put this up here so this way when people are coming on, they know that I'm praying and I will greet you after the prayer, okay? Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you, God. We lift you up. We magnify you. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. You are so worthy to be praised. Anybody know that? Anybody blessing God? Come on, let's celebrate God in the chat box. God, we love you. We honor you. You are the one that is in control, oh God, and we bless you on today. We come to you knowing that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. You said to cast our cares upon you because you care for us, oh God. We just love you and we magnify you and we lift you up. We, we recognize you as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the maker and creator of all things. But first of all, God, we are going to ask this one thing that that you forgive us for our sins, the things that we have done wrong, the fact that we may not have been as thankful as we needed to, oh God. God, forgive us. You said that if we would confess our sins, you would be faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we bless you on today. God, we thank you for our homes. We thank you for our family members. We thank you for our children, oh God. Anybody thankful? Let me see you say it up in the, in the um, chat box. God, we thank you for our family members, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for life. Waking us up in the morning, having us being part of the land of the living. Some people close their eyes today. Some people during this pandemic, oh God, uh, their lives slipped away, oh Jesus. God, we just thank you for um, being so good to us and for kind, so kind to us, oh God. We thank you for health, that we are healthy on today. We could be on a ventilator. We could be in the hospital, oh God. We could be suffering even in our own homes today, but you kept us. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Spirit right there. Well, you kept us, oh God. You kept our bodies regulating. You kept the organs functioning, oh God. You kept the cells where they need to be, oh God. And our blood vessels are, are doing their jobs, oh God. We bless you on today. All of the things that we take for granted, all of the things that we don't think of, God, you keep functioning in our lives. You allow it to, um, to happen. God, I need to see some thankful people in the chat box. God, we love you on today. We thank you for sight for smell, for taste, oh God, the ability to touch, the ability to see, oh God, the ability to feel, hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, that we're in our right mind on today. We know where our present place is. We know where we are. We know our name, oh God. We thank you that we have the activities of our limbs. Nobody had to, to feed us on this morning. Nobody had to push us or guide us in, oh God. And even if that's the case for us, you are so good to bring people in our lives, oh God. We thank you and we bless you on today. Hallelujah. Thank God we thank you for our extended family members. We thank you for our pastors who bring us the word of God, oh God. We thank you for our spiritual teachers and leaders in our lives. Hallelujah, God. We thank you that we have a church home and church family. We thank you for every member who's at home right now worshiping or who um, are sheltered in place or who are having drive-by services, oh God. But those who have a, a small memberships who are meeting and sitting six feet apart from each other, we thank you for all of the saints of God. We thank you, oh God, for our world leaders, our presidents, 
our prime ministers, our, our, our kings and queens, oh God, we thank you for them. God, touch them right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you're going to give them wisdom. We thank you that you're going to give them guidance, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for the ministries that you have blessed us with. We thank you, oh God, for entrusting us, using us. We thank you, God, for our gifts. This is a thank you, Thanksgiving prayer. Let me know what you're thanking God for. We thank you for our various gifts, oh God. We thank you for the people who love us, who don't have to love us. They're not even our relatives. They come into our lives and they bless us. God, we thank you, oh God, that we thank you for salvation. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins, oh God. We thank you for that kind of love that you had for us. Is anybody going to help me today? We thank you, oh God. We thank you for the love that you've shown over us, oh God. We thank you for, for your mercy. Oh my gosh. We thank you for your grace. We ought to go into worship right now, y'all. <laughs> God, we thank you. You didn't have to do it. Hallelujah, but you did. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for your word. Anybody grateful for God's word on today? For it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, we couldn't even think right or do right or walk right without your word, oh God. And we know the word of God is you yourself and we bless you and we honor you. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you for peace. Hallelujah. We thank you for joy. The joy that only you can give, oh God. I wish somebody bless him on today. I wish somebody would bless him. Lift your hands and bless God on today. God, we thank you. Come on now. We thank you, God. We bless you, oh God. We lift you up. We magnify you. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You didn't have to give us this medium called Facebook, this medium called Periscope, YouTube, oh God. We thank you for the various uh, platforms that this podcast is going on. You didn't have to do it, God. We thank you for technology, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody bless them on today. We thank you. You've been so good to us. We looked into our pantry and we've got canned goods and, and all types of food and, <clears throat> and things to keep us comfortable, oh God. We're not eating out of garbage cans. Hallelujah. We're not scrounging around for food. We thank you that that car wreck did not kill us. We thank you that even though we were on the operating table and it seemed like things were going to end, you delivered us, oh God. Oh my gosh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless him. We thank you, oh God, that we maybe there may be chaos on the outside, but on the inside, there's peace and tranquility. There's happiness. Some people are going crazy, but we're celebrating you and we're honoring you on today. We thank you for that. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless him. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God. Some of us still have income. Y'all need to bless them on today. You didn't have to do that, God. You didn't have to be so good to us, oh God. Hallelujah. And those of us who don't have income, you've made a way for us. You made a way out of no way, God. And we bless you. We honor you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. I wish somebody would worship God with me. Hallelujah, God. Come on, raise your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. To be able to hear the birds sing and to be able to see the breeze and feel the breezes. And hallelujah, God. You've been so good. You've been so good. Our children are healthy. Our parents are healthy. We're healthy, oh God. God, we cannot thank you enough. I want to end this prayer, but I've got to bless him. Come on, y'all help me bless the Lord on today. I've got to bless you, God. 
It was nobody but you. Nobody. Hallelujah. Nobody but you, God. Hallelujah. That's right. You're a way maker, a miracle worker for every miracle, for every miracle, God. For every miracle, God, that you made happen in our lives. Hallelujah. For every miracle, God, hallelujah, you made happen in our lives. Hallelujah, God. The things that we take for granted, to be educated, oh God. Some of us had to work through school and some of us had to struggle, God, for every miracle, for every way you made for us, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Somebody bless him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for every sunrise, for every time we saw the stars in the sky. You have been good. Come on, somebody bless him. I'm about to end this prayer. You have been good. And your mercy, hallelujah. Whew. Your mercy endures forever. And for everyone who may be watching this broadcast, who may feel like they have nothing to thank for, God, reveal it to them. This week, drop into their spirit everything you've been doing for them. But most important, God, we thank you for your character. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you that you're not a man that you should lie, lie, nor the son of man that you need to repent. We thank you for being constant in our lives. We thank you for loving us, even when we didn't pay attention to you, even when we didn't think about you, oh God. We bless your name. Hallelujah. That's right. We thank you for being an able God, a capable God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all help me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Woo. I tell you, I can't get to thanking God, honey. <laughs> and I needed to bring some tissue up here. I can't, I can't thank God without starting to worship him. Is he not a worthy? I love you too, Anita. I've seen some people come in. Let me put on my glasses, honey. Because look, these tears done got me all. Woo! I see Minister. Uh, let's see who came in here. Let me greet you guys before I go into the encouragement. Let me greet you. Let me greet you because I've seen some of you come in the door. I saw Minister Shama, Shamar Stevenson, Pastor Shamar Stevenson. God bless you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Um, uh, let's see who else have I not spoken to? Um, Anita, good to see you, darling. Good to see you. Um, Lorraine, I believe I greeted you before, but bless you. Bless you on today. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Some of y'all are still blessing the Lord. <laughs> Go ahead and bless them, honey. Go ahead and bless them. Yes, indeedy. Hallelujah. This is a shouting moment right here. I'm telling you, I cannot start thanking God. Whew without going into deep. I was trying to hold back a little bit, y'all. I was like, I got to continue with the broadcast. <laughs> I got to continue with the broadcast. I was holding back a little bit. Trust and believe I was holding back just a little bit. But um, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, I want to encourage you. Let me just put up some of these uh, reactions up here. Bless you. Good to see you, Pastor. Good to see you. Oh, hallelujah. You still in worship, uh, Andrew? <laughs> Hi, Pastor Payne, you still in worship. Hallelujah. That's all right. We just leave, let you go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Y'all bless him. I'm not crying. I'm got mascara. I got everything. Everywhere. Yes, God is good. Y'all need to bless him on today. We talked about, we talked about, dear ones, we talked about uh, being thankful. Woo in a crisis, being thankful in a crisis. 
Mm, that was good right there. <laughs> so if you miss it, you want to go back and watch this broadcast. And listen, I'm going to also put the broadcast on my YouTube channel. So you can go to bit.ly forward slash Tony Tube. Both T's are capitalized. You must put it exactly the way you see it into your browser in order to get there. bit.ly forward slash Tony Tube. And only the two T's are capitalized. Everything else is lowercase. But we talked about being thankful in a crisis that will go on YouTube. And of course, if you're following any of my podcasts, you can pick that up too as well. And I just want to encourage you guys before we go out the door. I want to encourage you. And let me just tell you, oh, my God, I still I still feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, my God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I want to encourage you because, listen, we got a lot of the saints here on this broadcast. We really do. Uh, but that does not mean that we don't need encouragement. OK, that does not mean that. But um, also, we do have a lot of people who watch us who may not know God at all. Who may not know him. And let me just extend to you, if you do not know Jesus Christ, who I believe is the son of God, it's an easy way that you can you can have a relationship with him. All you have to do is confess with your mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is God's son and that God raised Jesus from the dead and he died for your sins. So you have to admit that you are a sinner. OK, admit that I said I have done some stuff wrong. I did a lot of stuff wrong, okay? And once you admit that and you say, Jesus, come into my life, that's it. You just got to confess. You just got to believe. You just got to accept, uh, believe, and confess. That's all you have to do, all right? And so Jesus will come into your life. Now, with that being said, I do want to encourage you. <laughs> Y'all still saying comments. Hold on, let me. Before I get the encouragement, let me say, oh, oh look, Etta still, she's still praising. Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him, honey. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Pastor Payne said, I have been since you started. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yes, that's it. That's it. So much to be thankful for. Thank you, Etta, for saying that. It is so much to be thankful for. So listen, I want to encourage you guys. Um, whether you are a person who has been in the faith for a long time or whether you're somebody who is really struggling, you're really struggling right now. I want to encourage you. First of all, the times you live in now, whether you're living through something really happy, whether you're living through something sad, some chaos, it, it doesn't last. Life is, has ups and downs, peaks and valleys. OK, um, but if you if you learn, because this time is it can be very scary for some people, but it's not going to last. Somebody put that in the chat box. It's not going to last. But I tell you what will last. I think about that song, whatever you do for Christ will last. What I what I found that will last. It's the things that God puts in you, you know, the fruits of the spirit of love, joy, peace, kind, happiness, all that stuff, long suffering. And those types of things last in your life. Happiness does not last. Somebody put that in the chat box. Type that in there. Happiness does not last. But joy, joy will. Joy is one of the fruits of the spirit. And you say, what spirit? The spirit, the Holy Spirit, God's spirit. Because some of you just accepted Jesus Christ just now and, and God's spirit comes and lives in you. You can't do this stuff that I'm talking about in of yourself. You can't do it on your own. In other words, you have to have the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit in you to be able to do any of this stuff. So when you see and I say that I have joy, I can't do that just because of me. Yeah, the education doesn't do it. The pedigree doesn't do it. Having all this money doesn't do it. Um, somebody had sent something to me recently, guys. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. Uh, people are putting some comments, some encouraging comments up here if you're listening to the podcast. And I'm telling you, Etta said, Mary Etta said, be encouraged is not going to last. Woo. Oh, my goodness. And so, and, and Pastor Payne says, trouble doesn't last always. And listen, Having the joy of the Lord comes from the fruit of the spirit. And when you have God's spirit in you, you can do a lot of things you thought you could not. And it's not that people who have God in their lives don't see things for what is going on, what's really going on. 
because I listen to the news just like anybody else. I pay attention. I, I try to do what's asked of me. I try to prepare all of those types of things. But when you have the joy of the Lord inside of you, when you have God inside of you and you rely blessings to you, man of God, good to see you on today. Look, we went in today. We went in. OK, <laughs> we went in today. Make sure you watch the, the replay. But when you have God inside of you. You now can have that thankful spirit that we talked about having an attitude of gratitude. You can have that because you have God in you. And it's because you do that, guys, when you do that, when you begin to thank God. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to thank him. If you're struggling with what I talked about on today, then you then start a Thanksgiving journal. Begin to uh, write down the things that you are thankful for. Begin to write down the things that you are thankful for. You know, write three things every day and begin to praise God for it. I guarantee you, dear ones, your attitude is going to change. Huh? Your attitude is going to change. Let me see. Y'all still saying some good stuff. Your attitude is going to change. That's right. We see it too. But God, hallelujah. We see the circumstances. We see that it's getting dire. We see that it's getting dim. But when you have God's spirit in you, that causes you to be thankful. That causes you to say, I'm nervous a little bit, but I know who God is. See, that's why you got to read the word. I know who God is. And when I know who God is, it starts to calm you down. Oh, my goodness. It begins to calm you down. And then you can start shifting your thinking into being thankful. Instead of thinking, you start thanking. See, that's what gets us so worried all the time. <laughs> that's what gets us so worried all the time. We think too much. Oh, my goodness. We think, what are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? Well, where are we going to sleep? We start thinking too much. But if you start thanking, it doesn't mean that you don't plan. It doesn't mean that you ignore the situation. But what it does mean is you shift your focus. Woo. Because all the thinking you could do in the world, you may not think up what you really need to be thinking up. That stress and that worry is going to um, it's going to hamper your creativity and your ability to think. But once you start focusing on God, once you put it in his hands, once you start doing that, what you find out is once you worship him and you look to him, he sees that you're looking to him for the answers and he'll begin to drop something into your mind, something into your heart, something into your, your thoughts, an idea, a suggestion. Somebody may call. Somebody may stop by. You can do this, dear one. You can do it if you got God. You can't do it by yourself. Ooh, let the Holy Spirit dwell in you at all times. That's what Lorraine Smith says. God is who he says he is. Oh, my God. I'm trying to get off of here. And y'all, I'm telling you, y'all saying something. That's right. He calms us. Or then we can hear his voice. And that's whose voice we want to hear. We want to hear his voice. We don't want to hear just our mama's voice. Mama is good. Mama is great. And God knows my mother a praying woman. She's a believing woman. But if you connect with somebody that's not connecting to God, and sometimes even though they mean well for us, we got to learn to ask God first. What do you think about this? Remember, Sweet Reese said, he is our source for everything. Hallelujah. Marietta said, instead of thinking, thanking shifts your focus. Oh, I'm running with you. I'm running right behind you. <laughs> I'm running right behind you. And Pastor Payne says, draw nearer to God and he will draw nearer to you. James 4, 8. Well, I tell you what. Mm. Oh, my gosh. I can't stop reading these little testimonies. And Sweet Reese said, I have received many, many blessings and God will use the enemy to bless you. Oh, my God. That's why you want to hear his voice. Right, Edda? Edda said his voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you want to hear his voice, because you may not open the door when you see somebody who's your enemy. <laughs> you may not open the door. But when you listen to his voice, if he tells you to open the door, if he tells you to approach them, if he tells you to do something, you'll do it. And it'll work out just fine. Let me end with this story. I mean, it's kind of funny in a way. 
but I just want to share with you about hearing God's voice, about being thankful, even in a crisis. I um, my father pastored for many years. Um, he had was deceased and we had a new pastor and this young lady had really just started coming to the church, you know, and, um, her mother ended up passing and I learned from my parents and thank God for them. You know, they would go visit the sick. They would go see people who lost loved ones. They would bring food to people and all of that. And I still practice that to this day. Somebody say, thank God for the saints. <laughs> If they show you the right way, honey, those are some things that you keep in your life. And so um, this young lady, had uh, mother had passed. And I was afraid that because she was rather new, you know how that is when somebody's new to the church. Sometimes, you know, they're not being mean, but they may not know. OK. And they may not support because they're not really familiar. You know what I'm saying? And so I felt compelled, which I know is the Holy Spirit, to make sure. I get to her home. And um, as I was preparing, and I need to I need to read what y'all saying. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. As I was preparing <laughs> to go to her home, I felt like and, and at that time, I, you know, I didn't always know how God would speak, you know. But I know that it was God speaking, but I felt a compelling, you know, and sometimes people ask, how do you know God is speaking? Because sometimes it just keeps coming back up in your mind. And he was saying, and this is kind of funny to me. He was saying, you know, and, and most of us and people who don't know, sometimes we're African-Americans and in some other ethnic groups, you probably do the same thing. Honey, we'll bring food to your house, you know, when people die and all that kind of stuff. So I was going to fix this entire meal. I was going to fix this entire meal. And bring it to our home because I figured maybe not that many people would be coming, Pastor Shamar. And so um, I made up my mind I was gonna make some chicken, some some baked chicken, and some string beans and some collard greens and some baked macaroni and cheese. And I was gonna make some uh, um, uh, sweet potato casserole. I was gonna make all this stuff. Y'all hungry yet? <laughs> I was gonna make all this stuff. And I had it in my mind. I was going to make it and I was going to bring it over and I was going to sit with her and I was going to talk to her and I'm going to pray with her and her husband. And she had two children. Well, something happened and I could not make this chicken. All I had was the sides. And I was very disturbed. I said, Lord, I can't go over here with just these sides. And he said, uh, I just I'm sorry. All I had was chicken. I didn't have the sides. All I had was meat. OK. And I said, I can't go over here with just no meat. <laughs> you need some sides to go with this. Y'all go with me here. OK, I know I'm a little extended than what I normally do, but I want you to get this. I said, I can't go over there with just no meat. And so finally, I went over there after fussing with the Lord. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm fussing with him. And I go over there with this meat. And bless God, when I sat down with her, I was right. It wasn't that many people that came, you know. I think she had maybe one family member or something there because she was from South Carolina and she was in New Jersey. So I sit down with her and I bring this meat and I said, well, you know, I wanted to make more for you. And I said, something happened and all I did was bring this meat and I started not to bring it. But the Lord was like, no, bring it. She said, well, Miss Tony, she said, I just sent my and I was late and I was late coming because I was fussing with the Lord. <laughs> so bless God. When I got there, she said, I just sent my husband out for some chicken. Y'all not listening to me. She said, I, everybody brought us something, but they brought us all these sides, but they didn't bring us any meat. <laughs> Y'all listening to me. That nobody brought any meat. They brought all these sides. And um, I just sent my husband out to Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I, I said to the Lord, then I repented. I said, Lord, you tried to tell me. And I'm saying this all in my head. And me and her, we laughing about it. We laughing about the fact I fought with the Lord and all this. And I brought this chicken. So we said, well, now she going to have double chicken. Somebody put double chicken in the chat box. OK, especially if you're watching me on the replay. I want to make sure you lasted this long. OK. 
<laughs> put double chicken in the chat box. Well, her husband came back. I'm not finished. Her husband came back and he said, you're not going to believe this. And she said, what? He said, I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken and I had to come back empty handed. She said, why? He said, because they ran out of chicken. Somebody need to lift their hands, honey, and say, you need to listen to God's voice. <laughs> you need to listen to his direction. He's listening. He already knows ahead what's going to happen. He is in complete uh, control, and he even cares about the small nuances. Somebody, oh, God, the small nuances that's going on in your life. When he tells you to do something, he's already seen the end from the beginning. I know I use the chicken example, but you can put any example in that place. When he tells you to do something, he's already got it under control. And this is why I can be thankful in a crisis because I know God is listening. I know God cares. I know God loves us. Oh my gosh. I know God loves us. And I know he's there for us, not as an errand boy, but because he has the whole world in his hands. He has a plan and he has not lost control. So I can be thankful for whatever he sends my way, for whatever he does for us on today, whatever he thinks and how he is in his character. I can be thankful because God's got it all. Somebody say all. God's got it all under control. Well, listen, dear ones, I got to go. But I can be reached on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere is Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, that's right. We got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.